guy for these first two office hours. Um, Alexi, I'm going to I'm going to real quick before you do that, say that you have been one of the most influential people on, on Teams app templates, period, across the world, have done so much work with customers around the globe. Um, so we're very grateful to have your time here to share some of what you've learned. And Alexi was the one who really put together a lot of these slides that you'll see today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jess, for this great introduction and, and nice to meet you all. So yeah, my name is Alexis. I'm, I'm based in France. I've been a, a CSA for the last four years and I'm now working on Teams integration scenarios. Uh, and so my, my focus has been definitely on supporting customers uh, in a variety of scenarios to integrate uh, not only the Teams app templates, but uh, any scenarios uh, related to Azure, most of them. So uh, I do have a good experience on that. And all the content that we are sharing today is also all the key learnings that we had through these different integrations. So this is our key learnings. We, we are still learning. Um, so I'm sure that there will be question that will uh, surprise us. Uh, that will be good and relevant question. Hoping to have them um, and happy to answer as much as we can. Awesome. Thanks so much, Alexi. So I'm Jason Marino. Uh, I look after Teams platform for Microsoft customer success. So for the past couple of years, we've been helping customers bring together the investments they've made, do more with, with the investments they have inside of Teams, which has been awesome and a ton of fun. This application company communicator being one of the most prominent that we've seen and why we spent a bunch of time trying to put together this program. And then behind the scenes, we've got three absolute legends. That was a terrible build, sorry, Tim. <laughs> um, but Emma, Michael, and Tim were part of the team of five customer success managers around the globe who helped us put this whole initiative together. And they've been incredible. You're gonna hear from them because they're gonna lead some of the office hours as we move forward. But they're also behind the scenes with a slew of our customer success managers to help answer your questions today and make sure that we follow up with them. So big thanks for the group behind the scenes and, and helping and supporting here. All right, so real quick before I pass over to Lexi, what to expect today for the remaining six weeks? I know I've shared this, so forgive me, but I also don't want to assume everybody reads announcements. We've got a lot going on. It's also part of the reason that we're even having this discussion in the first place around organization-wide communications. And so what we did inside of the playbook, so this is slide two in the playbook you all should have, and again, we'll post this again. Um, what I try to do based on some feedback is share who each office hour would be relevant for, recognizing that a lot of the organizations that have nominated into this program have somebody from their, their comms department as well as somebody from their IT department. Not every one of them, but a lot of them. And so we didn't want to waste anyone's time. I'd say the only really important office hours to call out with this one is number two, which is next week. This is going to be a technical look into deployment, and part of today is also going to be fairly technical, so bear with us in terms of the, the structure that we're setting up and the environment, the way that we're setting this up. Um, but next week, unless you're really interested to see how this gets deployed and don't have a technical background, I'd say you can probably sit that one out, and then we'll pick back up on week three when we go into the communication strategies. And that's going to be a big focus here is how to use the application and how to create a communication strategy for it while leveraging some of the content that we're going to be sharing with you in week three. Now, the reason we set it up like this was because we're also not naive enough to think that in two weeks, if you're just starting from scratch on this solution, that you've had the time and the efforts to corral everybody together and we'll be able to deploy it in that amount of time. I think some of you will, some of you already have but some of you are just starting the journey as well. And so we wanted to make sure that we can work in parallel where we can build the comm strategy while you're also finishing the deployment and getting things set up within your organization. And then finally, we recognize that six weeks might not be enough for every organization here. That's fine. Our goal is to have no organization left behind though. So even if you're falling behind, we've got everything recorded. We've got one-on-one -on -one support available if you need it. Let us know. We'll make sure you get the resources that you have. And our only ask is that if you can, initially post your questions into the channel. It's so valuable not only to get those out loud, but what I always tell our customer success managers, who frankly do the same thing to me a lot, is I go, when you post in the channel, you also more often than not get a perspective from somebody else that you would have never had if it was just a message to me. So again, whatever you're comfortable with, feel free to share that. Um, but I just wanted to want to start with that. All right, enough for me. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to hand over to Alexi. Alexi, I didn't realize this, and, and this is probably a, a dumb move on my part. Do you have these slides up at the moment or on, on your laptop? I'm only thinking because the subtitles won't show if if I'm presenting and you're speaking. Um, no, I don't have the slide on my side, but I think that should be fine. Uh, there is okay, no, cool. not too much slide. Uh, so I'll pass over to you. Yeah. And then if um, if you want to go ahead. And then again, yeah. I'll pause you, Alexi, as we go through if any great questions come up. So again, feel free, folks, to throw them in the chat. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Jess. So th this week one session is really around uh, the preparation. So um, it's a journey, a six weeks, six week journey. And, and here the first thing is really to get prepared. Um, and so the preparation here is really around the organization because this is something that you, you are bringing a change into the organization, a new way to communicate. Um, there are, will be some things to prepare the environment. So this will be uh, around the technical things that we need to set in place to deploy the solution. Uh, and then prepare yourself because you will be the, the leader of this uh, project and this change. And so uh, you need as well to be prepared and know how to get supported um, for the journey. So well, let's move to the next one. So when, when company communicator is deployed into an organization, and this is true for, I would say, any app templates, um, but there, there are key people that you have to take care of and, and that will be key in the in the, in the deployment. Uh, so obviously the first group of people will be the employees. So the employees will be the people that will um, have to understand what company communicator is, um, what type of communication and messages they will receive from uh, this application. And so uh, everything here is around driving the change and it's uh, around change management principles. So this will be addressed uh, across week three to six, which is typically uh, how to prepare a communication, how to train people uh, and so on and so forth. So employees is, is one key uh, pillar of the transformation. The second one will be the communication team. So basically, if you if someone receives a communication, mean that someone is preparing and sending this communication as well. So again, different group of people. This is what we call in the company communicator organization the author. So these are the people that will uh, create the messages, and so they will be really fond of the solution. They will want to jump onto that because, like, they bring a new communication channel. This is not emails anymore. It's a uh, instantaneous and indirect access for Microsoft Teams. And so uh, they will want to understand how to use this channel, how to prepare the messages, and there are some governance and organization and preparation uh, of this population to communicate efficiently. The third pillar will be IT as an operation. Uh, one, one key thing that you have to keep in mind is typically uh, the app templates and the Teams platform um, is not a service that you use out of the box, not like a service that you choose on the marketplace and you click and you say, I want to use it. It's a solution that you have to install and you can even customize. This is the strength, the strength of the solution that uh, is provided as it is by Microsoft. You can deploy it, use it as it is, or you can customize it and make it your own. And, and this is not um, an out of the box. I mean, it's an out of the box solution, but it's a service that you need to deploy. And, and have to deploy. And so you need to involve people from the IT and operations to uh, make that happen. And so we have to answer their question and we are here to support you in this uh, answering process. And the last pillar is security. So wh why security? Uh, because basically we are bringing an application into your organization. And as any application brought into an organization, there are legitimate questions raised and asked by the security team. And so there is no fear uh, to have uh, on this question. This is just something that is usual and that needs to happen and that we know that will happen. So here we have prepared a list of questions that are uh, the frequently asked question or most um, you know, yeah, the most asked question, yes, typically. And so we know how to answer that and, and support you in this process. So again, nothing to fear, but we know that you will have to cover these different personas. We can go to the next one. We'll dig a little bit more into these different uh, types of group of populations. So for the employees, I think this is the, the one uh, that where most of you will feel the most comfortable. But basically, um, during week three to four, you will have all the discussion around how to prepare your communication plan. So basically, uh, you will have to introduce this solution. You will have to make sure that uh, people understand what the solution is, how to use it. Um, there, there are some key things that, that, that you, you should provide and that we advise to provide. So typically, is, uh, tell people that there is a new application, um, prepare some snackable contents or screenshot that will tell them what will be the change, that they will see a new application popping up into Teams, that they will receive messages from this application, what types of com communication they, they will receive from there, uh, really, really basic stuff, but just to let people know that there is something new 
be prepared to answer this, their question and maybe anticipate and be proactive with some trainings, materials, and things that will anticipate their question so that they can ask and, and um, yeah, be more um, understand the change and, and be open to it. Alexi, if I may, real quick, one thing I think worth calling out here, and it's 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 on the first bullet. Um, we've seen organizations commonly do two things: is one, they actually announce the application with the application, which is pretty cool, right? So you, so you point, you you not only tell users what's happening in the first adaptive card message that you send out. Um, another one is we've seen a lot of organizations use the application to point users towards the resource base. So Ernst and Young was the example we shared with this community who joined the call and, and what Jonathan talked about from Ernst & Young is when they launched Company Communicator, what they did is they first used it to point users to resources, which was essentially just a SharePoint site with a bunch of different training resources to learn how to use Teams. And that was also pinned inside of Teams for them on the left-hand navigation bar. So a bunch of different ways you can do that. We will cover this in much more detail as we get into week three, four, five, uh, but we wanted to give everybody a heads up. We think it's really important to kind of build this foundational knowledge now. Exactly. So this is for the employees. <clears throat> then, then let's uh, check for the communication team. So the, the, the communication team will be, we, we really recommend that you do have a couple of people already identified that will be the first people that will use the company Hi, communication and the first, the first <laughs> communication. <laughs> for those watching later, um, we uh, had somebody come off mute, so I'll yeah. give that a mute everyone again. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, so uh, the best thing to do is reach to identify someone or a group of people that would be the first one uh, sending the communication and that would be part of what do we call the pilot. So the first you know, message is always something that is new, so it's always a pilot thing. Um, so first identify someone that will communicate or the list of people that will want to communicate. Uh, these people uh, will uh, we will we'll typically uh, need to understand what would be the process to send a, a message for this channel. Um, so th there will be some differences. Typically, the way you are used to send communication uh, using emails, you will have uh, you can target direct people, but you will use most probably aliases, distribution group, distribution list, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so the process will be the same on, on the company communicator. But uh, we have done a, a kind of a segregation of duty be between who can receive communication and who can send communication. And so to be an author and someone that can send, uh, there are some definition and agreement to uh, define internally uh, within the company to say how someone will be able to send communication, what will be the validation process, uh, and, and how to facilitate this process so that it's not like uh, such a big things to do that uh, nobody uses the solution. So we see typically two main uh, trends here in how to approach the, this, this topic. Uh, this is the option one and two that, that are at the bottom of the slide. So typically people that can author and send messages will be either people directly accessing the com company communicator application and they will be free to send whatever they want to whoever they want um, into the organization as long as the application is installed, these people will be able to receive the messages. Or another option it will be to typically uh, use a kind of very simple process to submit some communication, have it reviewed before it is even sent and, and, and pushed to the, uh, the audience. Um, so it's not a, something big, but this is something to consider and, and communication teams will be definitely part of uh, of the experience and of, of this project. Jace, I don't, I don't know if you want to add something here. Uh, no, I think, I think you nailed this one. I, I just say, um, again, we'll go over this in great detail as we get into week three. We're spending this week to kind of set expectations, next week to deploy, and then we'll get into to some of the best practices around this in, in much, much more detail. So I appreciate that, Alexi. Yeah. So we can jump to the next one. Hey, Alexi, if I may, we're getting a bunch of uh, feedback in the chat, which I'm just going to address. Look, folks, we want this to be a community, so we're not going to run this where people are muted and they can't speak. This is an open forum. We want to have a community led effort, so definitely appreciate the feedback, but we want you all to feel comfortable sharing your questions. So I've muted everybody. You can mute the chat by right clicking on it, and then what we're going to do is at the end of this call when we start recording, we're going to let people unmute to ask their questions. So I'm everybody's cool with that. 
Um, but I just want to call that out because we're going to have a bunch of questions on it. Thank you so much. Yes, great. So then the, uh, the third persona will be, and, and this is a broader group of people, because when I say IT and operations, this is typically where there could be a variety of profiles and people into the organization. And sometimes it could be some quite challenging to identify who are the good resources. So um, to help you here, know that you may be familiar with the um, Office 365 services, and you may already have contacts within the IT department that are, that manage the uh, Office 365 services, like Microsoft Teams, to give a good example. Um, the solution here will, will be deployed on the Microsoft Cloud, that is Microsoft Azure. It's a different, another kind of beast. It's, it's something else, right? right? So usually, if you look at the organization and how people are organized, uh, we are we are talking about different groups of people. So people in charge of Azure will be different people that are in charge of office services that are different people that are in charge of maybe Azure Active Directory with who is in the directory of the company. So our advice here is if your company already has Azure deployed, and honestly, you may know that already. So if you know someone that is in charge of Azure in your company, try very soon the process to bring these people into the conversation because they will be facilitator to deploy the solution on Azure. There, there certainly, uh, there, there is already processes in place, uh, methodology, validation, pieces that have been approved and so on and so forth that will facilitate the entire process to deploy the solution on Azure, right? If you don't know who these people are, maybe you don't know who is using Azure in the organization, don't hesitate to uh, contact your Microsoft account team. So your own contact on the modern work area uh, on the Microsoft side, they will, you know, ask a few questions so that we kind of connect the dots and find the good contact for you and to have this facilitation to identify the good folks, right? So this is this is the first thing. Um, and, and then when you talk to IT and operation, I mean, there are always typical question that will be asked. And this is question that, that are very, very, very um, so something that we know how to answer. So there will be question around what am I deploying? So what are the services that are that are deployed? What is the technical architecture uh, or what are the components that will be deployed? How do I deploy that? So you tell me that I need to deploy something. How should I do, do that? Is there a documentation? Is there anything that will help me to achieve that? Um, what, are, what should I take care of? So Users will be using this application, so I, I anticipate that there will be people from the company asking asking question if this doesn't work, and then we open support ticket, and this will go back to me. So, how should I learn how if the application is working or not, okay. and what so, can I do uh, to make sure. it work? Right. Then the cost cost is something that is also uh, a topic that comes uh, very often uh, on the on the table. And uh, then the Microsoft support. So how is the support process working between the company and the Microsoft support team and so on? So all of these questions uh, are today documented and answered on a web page uh, that is a GitHub uh, web page where all these different pillars uh, are, are answered. I don't know, Jess, if you want to go rapidly to one of these links just to uh, show people where this information are. Yeah, so, for sure. So um, I was going to say just real quick, maybe you'll see this is the original docs page right here. So let me back up for a sec. Where you see the company communicator app template. So we'll, we'll send this all out. Um, but this is our documentations page for all our different app templates. Company communicators right here. You go to the GitHub repo. And if you scroll down, we've got documentation, deployment guide, and all these things that we were talking through. And, and so the first one we were talking about was um, solution overview, right? Where this this actually goes through the architecture right here, Lexi, that you were talking through. Is there anything you want to call out here? No, that's fine. Just to say that, uh, honestly, the, the way to deal with that, that you will need someone to deploy the solution. So you need to have an access to an Azure subscription and someone that knows what it means and how to do that. If you need support, we know how as well how to support you, but we cannot deploy the solution on your behalf because we need to have all the credentials and, and, and access. And so usually we support someone to do that instead of really doing that on your behalf. So key things is identify who in the organization will be able to deploy the solution. Then if they have questions, all the answer 
that they, they hack based on our experience are on this documentation and GitHub repository. If you need to get support to be guided through where are the answers, come back to us and we will guide you to find the good answer. And if this requires to have like a 30 minute call to answer the question live, this is something we can do as well if you need this type of support, right? So just feel comfortable, just identify someone. And once you have identified this, this person, the content is available and we're here to support you. And then Lexi, could we go over the cost estimates? There's a great couple of questions on this one that I think we should call out out loud. Um, but I mean, your, your experience on the cost estimates here. So again, this is another tab on the same page, which which yeah. we're happy to share out the really great pricing calculator here. Yeah, so um, th this is this is a, uh, a very somehow funny question because um, people are asking for all the details around uh, how much it will cost. And this is the the detailed answer, which is for every needs component based on the our own assumption on how many messages will be sent on a given month. This is the cost of the solution on a on a given month. So uh, basically Azure is not a per user based uh, cost model, it's a, a, a usage based model. So it does not matter how many people will be using the solution as you may have with Office 365. The good question is how many messages will be sent, whatever the number of people are in my organization. And, and to do this calculation, it's pretty easy. It's how many people will get a message and how many messages will I send on a given month, right? And, and here we provide some estimate, which is if if I say I send 1 million messages on a given month or 2 million messages on a given month, what will be the estimated cost of the solution? 2 million messages a month is a lot. So to be honest, I mean, it covers a lot. But uh, basically to make things simple, uh, keep in mind that basically if you, can, if you want to send up to 2 million messages per month, the cost over a year will be less than $1,000, right? So this is what you keep in mind is globally, most of the users of the, of the companies deploy the solution as it is. And um, if you send 2 million messages per month and you do that every year, every, every month of the year, at the end of the year, the solution will cost a bit less than $1,000. And Lexi, if I may, this is great feedback. So, so maybe just to summarize everything we said there, because this is a really important topic and, and addressing a couple of questions in the chat. So again, you should expect most organizations to pay somewhere around 75-ish dollars a month, right? USD, um, upwards of 100. I will say Ernst & Young, who joined us on the call, if you all remember, did share that their cost estimates, and or not estimates, their actual costs, which was pretty cool. Um, so they had sent they send 300, 300 to 320,000 messages out per week on Company Communicator every week. So in every given any given month, that's reaching roughly 1.2 to 1.5-ish million users, and they're spending 114 bucks. So for that level of impact and for, and I'm not promising these read rates, but their read rates were 85% and their click rates on the button in the card were 22%. That's an astoundingly small amount of money to pay for that level of engagement. So again, that's that's some of the highest we've seen to be fair, but we've seen massive engagement using this application. Now, look, all that said, your customer success managers know that if you're serious about doing this, we also have some funding available to support you as we go through and do this. Personally, I'm hoping we can make the effort and in and, and the case for 74 bucks a month to do something this incredible, but I also recognize that budgets have been made in some organizations. You might not have the ability to get anything. So we wanted to make sure that we cover you. So reach out to your, your Microsoft rep customer success manager. And, and if, if that needs to be done, we can help you get that sorted. Hey, Jace, uh, yeah. Michael here. If I might just quickly add, please. Um, Part of the success of Ernst & Young is that they spent a year uh, doing what we call experiments in Agile methodology of what works, what drives the highest click-through rates, what types of messaging works, what types of subjects, what types of body copy, um, the actual verbiage that they'll use in their call to action button. And so um, we have created the templates based on that learning. And so, um, we will share all of those best practices with our global community um, through the Teams Broadcast Hub so that we're, again, as Jay said, we're not promising you 80% view rates, but we're gonna give you the best shot at getting the highest view rate by using these best practices learned over the last year with a very highly instrumented and closed loop scenario for the communications with Ernst & Young. Thanks, Jay. Great ad, great ad. 
Alexi, right, I'll pop back to the slide if that works. Yeah, I think we're good. So we can go back to the slide. And uh, I think we are good with this one. Uh, the last person now will be the security team. Um, this will be, so here again, it's not, I mean, a, a good way to identify someone in the organization that will be in charge of that. Um, my, our advice will be the following, that basically people that are supporting you on the IT side, so if you find someone and you will find someone that will help you in the process to deploy the application, um, these people will what, what they can do or not do. So basically, if there is any security concern around that, they will be the first one to raise their hand and say, hey, I need to to go through this internal process because here I'm doing something where I, I'm not sure if this is something I'm supposed to do, right? Or I'm totally fine with that. And so all the green lights have already been provided. So uh, again, different situation, different uh, contacts. Uh, but if there are any question around the security of the solution, so the first thing to know is that company communicator has been deployed into several dozens of companies already. And, and when I say dozens, uh, um, Des, you will know the company better than I do, but we do have um, companies in the bank industry, in the finance industry. I mean, it's not limited to specific industries. Mm. Um, so the, the security review of this solution has been made multiple times. Um, it's something that all the code and all the resources are provided to you. So if you need to customize or uh, activate additional security measure or features, you can do so. And again, we are here to support you if you need to do that. So no risk, no fear across this question. But uh, yeah, again, we we provide the documentation to that. So here is a different type of documentation because the question are uh, a bit different th than how do I deploy the solution? It's more around where, where wh how do we manage data residency? How do we manage access to the application? What are the permission required? What, will, what the application will do? on behalf of my user, uh, what if that happened, and so on and so forth. So all these what if questions are sometimes difficult to document publicly. So we put that in the FAQ uh, and, and this is what we provide to you so that you can uh, fetch into the database and see if there is a, a, an answer to this question. And if not, as the community, we will be happy to answer that and populate the FAQ base. Hey, Alexi, a quick question from, uh, from the chat that might be valuable here is, um, Question was, can you apply Azure CAIQ's answers for this? It might have been, it might have been from the previous uh, conversation topic. Does, does that make sense? Yes. So uh, I don't know what is CAIQ. Okay, cool. Because I don't either. So <laughs> I was this is a, I'm the one who's posted the yeah, question please. on the, on yeah, the chat. Uh, so CIQ is a, is a self-security assessment that company do, and, and Microsoft has, has a pretty uh, fluffy one about Azure. Uh, and I was just wondering if the answers you gave for your security assessment uh, for Azure would just apply to this uh, to this communicator app. So, so, um, so a, a good way to answer that is typically, so, Two things. One, we provide the code as open source, so basically you have access to the code and you have access to all the components that are deployed. So there is nothing uh, hidden here. This is something that we provide and then you deploy it and, and you make it your own. Um, so you can inspect the code, you can inspect what is being deployed, you can do any kind of forensic investigation on what is being uh, proposed to you. All right, so this is the first thing. Uh, the second is that if you look at the architecture and the components that are deployed, they are standard Azure services. So if you have done any kind of validation, security validation of these services, this will apply as well for Company Communicator. Communicator company Communicator is an application that is just using Azure components and the code is provided by Microsoft. Um, and so the, the, everything that we have validated as part of this Azure assessment is reusable in the context of Company Communicator. And if this is and the Cloud Security Alliance, yes, CSA. So the CSA consensus. So uh, typically, uh, so there, there are different levels of answer to that. But basically, you know that the Microsoft services are assessed, and you can have some policies enforced at the, the level of the company to make sure that these Azure services comply with your policy. So we may have not done this work ourselves. So we, we try to follow all the standard and best practices. 
but uh, we don't formally follow a specific standard in terms of how we, did we design the solution. So if you need to do this review, you can do it. Um, but yeah, we, we are not formally following a specific standard or validation process, except that we are following as much as we can our best practices and the practice that we uh, provide to the customers. I can give you some example. Uh, do we have a firewall to protect the solution in part, as part of the solution? No. Why? Because most of the time, customers already have a firewall to protect any of these applications. So this is a plus one application deployed in Azure. So we do not provide this type of, of, of component. Do we, do we need that? Yeah, you will most probably need this type of solution, right? So this is just to give you an example. Yeah, that's great. Looks like a few people posted some responses too in the chat. Well, um, yeah. well, I uh, happy to make sure that we follow up with you on that question too, if if we didn't address there. All right. So now, uh, this is the I would say operational preparation, especially for the next week, uh, because next week will be really a demonstration around how to deploy the solution. And so, before we can even do that. Uh, we need to prepare the environment. So there are a couple of things that we need to have before we can even deploy the solution. So we talked about that quite a lot, but you understand that to deploy the solution, you need an Azure subscription. So this is the first thing that you need to have, which is uh, this so-called Azure subscription. And when I say you need that, you need to have someone that knows how to deploy the solution to Azure, all right? So this is where we are back to the question around who is the person in the organization that can deploy something on Azure. Um, the, the, um, the, the, there are some key questions as part of the deployment template. So we provide a deployment template. So you just have to fill in some of the information requested by the template before you can deploy it. Uh, one of the question, and these are the three main questions you have to think about before you can deploy it. One will be, do you want to have this application accessible on your private domain or maybe you don't care? Uh, basically, this URL will not be seen by any of your users. So it's really a technical matter and sometimes as well a, a security matter because you want to control uh, all the URLs that uh, the application in your company use or not. So this is one question, uh, custom domain. So your own domain or a domain provided by Microsoft. Who will be the author? Because as part of the deployment, we need to provide a list of authors that will be authorized to access the authoring application. This can be changed later in the process, but we need to at least provide a, a first one for the deployment. It could be yourself, it could be the person that deployed the application, but it needs to be someone at least that will be an author and wants to send messages to test the application. So I think it's a good advice to have yourself as being part of this list of uh, UPN or identities. And the last one will be the Azure region, which is Azure has more than 60 regions today. And so you have to decide where you want to deploy the solution uh, to give you some. So you may have some data residency constraint uh, to follow. Uh, but as a rule of thumb, the, um, the best answer will be deploy the solution where your uh, Office 365 environment is deployed already. So if you have a deployment in the US, pick a region that is US based, right? As simple as that. By default, US is provided, and, and if you deploy, if your team's environment is deployed in Europe, it's better to pick a region that is based in Europe. Again, if you have, you may have other privacy constraints and regulation constraints, so uh, this is what you have to follow, uh, and this is just uh, general uh, recommendations. And like, it may be worth calling out as well that um, look, the FAQ that we put together as a team is now 23 pages long. So I don't expect everybody to go in and read that in detail. But I mean, if you want to control F and, and um, search for content and information, uh, it's a great resource. I've been using it a ton. We're going to continue to build it as we go through. And the reason I'm bringing it up is there's some great info there on um, on security as well as this these particular questions that were just addressed. So what we did is we all came together as a group, I think of about eight of us, and said, what are the most common questions that are coming up, common, common issues, common concerns, common opportunities and best practices that we're seeing as customers go through this over the past year or so that we've been working on company communicator, and then how do we put that into a documentation? And I think what's really cool, maybe one last thing to add is, is what we talked about with the group yesterday, 
is that that FAQ document is going to be living and then it's going to actually be put up on the GitHub repository as well. So we're hoping a lot of what happens in this community effort actually influences the strategy not only of these teams application templates and company communicator itself uh, but really helps us update some of these services and, and add some new features and things that we think might be valuable yeah uh, very quickly um, so four main things and it's also subscription the git repository so this is the second thing so you see that uh, the, the source code is provided on github um, so you may choose to use the, the, the code from where it is today, so provided by Microsoft. Uh, if you need to customize the application is in any way, uh, you will have to uh, take this code and put it an, an, into another location that is your own location. You will not be able to submit any change on the code if you are using the Microsoft repository. You have to, what we call, clone the application somewhere else onto your own repository. Uh, could it be a GitHub, Azure DevOps, Git? any kind of source repository um, and uh, we in all cases advise you to uh, make it your own code so to do this clone operation even if this is not mandatory if you don't customize uh, this is still recommended okay um, third one will be uh, basically the application request to have some permission so the application will be able to typically read the group of your azure active directory so that you can send the communication to the group of users in your organization and there are additional consent to provide as well so to do that you need to um, have what we call an admin consent and get access to uh, your application is to have an admin consent to use these permissions and so to get this consent you need to identify the azure id admin that is the only one able to provide this uh, this consent right the list of consent is provided this is a question that is very common uh, we provide the list of consent the permissions and why we need this consent and what will be the impact of not providing this consent. Um, some of them can be not provided with some feature that will not be working. Typically, if you don't give access to the list of group in Azure ID, you won't be able to target groups, but you will still be able to send communication to people that have installed the application. So, um, but still, you need to provide some consent. The last one is uh, so here we have an application deployed on Azure. You provided you provided the consent, but you still need to deploy the application to your user in Teams. And to do that, you usually need someone that will be an administrator on the Teams admin portal side. So this is a third person in the IT organization, someone that will be able to uh, provide a good permission to this application and set up this application so that uh, it is deployed to uh, who has to get access to the application. So there is what we call a permission policy, a setup policy, and you have to bring this application into your app catalog. Some of you may already have application in Teams enabled, some not, so it's a, a, di a discussion that we are ready to have because this is something that is very common to have as well. Uh, I see many people asking questions around GCC. Uh, so GCC is the um, USA government cloud area. So uh, GCC is a specific area for uh, people working directly or indirectly with um, uh, the, the US government. Um, so th there are there is a variety of configuration here. So um, if you are on Office 65 GCC, but using the uh, standard uh, Azure subscription that we call Azure Commercial, there should be absolutely no problem to deploy the solution, right? Um, there, there, there is additional complexity if you are using the Microsoft Azure government area, and we do have a procedure to do that but it's not on the online documentation. This is something we, something we provide in an ad hoc mode with, um, and we provide support to do that. So we support GCC. Uh, we don't support GCC high, if you ask the question, because GCC high doesn't support uh, both services as of now. All right. Okay, so then uh, the last person to be prepared is yourself. So here, as you are here today, I think this is a good way to start, which is to learn from the community, uh, ask questions and, and get access to this content. Uh, basically, the, the, the main thing I want you to remember is um, don't, don't stay stuck. So basically, if there is any question you have, uh, again, we don't want to left any organization behind. So if you have any question, ask it to the community. Uh, and if you need help, just raise your hand and we 
be there to help you and, and answer your question. Okay. That's awesome. And look, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording here, but I um, I, I recognize we probably have a lot of people on this call just based on the chat who are comfortable <laughs> speaking up, and I love that. So please feel free to do it. If you're not, don't hesitate. I mean, ask your question. We we're encouraging our Microsoft reps to post questions broadly in the channel again, so other folks can see, because a lot of us will probably have common questions, and and that's the reason we built the FAQ. So um, no question should be left behind as well. So feel free to ask them as we go. And so with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording for the folks that are going to watch this 